Chapter Eleven of The Adventures of Bindle by Herbert Jenkins. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Don W. Jenkins. Chapter Eleven The Camouflaging of Mr. Gupperduck. One. Ah! cried Bindle as he pushed open one of the swing doors of the public bar of the Yellow Ostrich. I thought I should find my little sunflower here and he grasped the hand that ginger did not extend to him demonstration was not ginger's strong point the members of the informal club that used to meet each friday night at the scarlet horse had become very uncertain in their attendance and the consequent diminution in the consumption of liquor had caused the landlord to withdraw the concession of a private room bindle had accepted the situation philosophically but ruddy bill had shown temper in the public bar he had told the landlord what he thought of him finishing up a really inspired piece of decorated rhetoric with yes it's the scarlet horse all right but there's a ruddy donkey behind the bar and with that he had marched out from that date bindle's leisure moments had been mostly spent in the bar of the yellow ostrich it was here that ginger when free from his military duties would seek bindle and the two or three congenial spirits that gathered round him Wilkes would cough, Huggles grin, and Ginger spit vindictive disapproval of everyone and everything, whilst old Joe told the tale. "'There are times,' remarked Bindle, when he had taken a long pull at his tankard, "'when I feel I could almost thank God for not being religious.' He paused to light his pipe. Ginger murmured something that might have been taken either as an interrogation or a protest. I just been avin a stroll on Putney Eath, continued Bindle, settling himself down comfortably in the corner of a bench. I likes to give the gals a treat now and then, and who do you think I saw there? He paused impressively. Ginger shook his head, Huggles grinned, and Wilkes coughed. Wilkes was always coughing. Clever lot of coves you are, said Bindle, as he regarded the three. Grand talkers, ain't you? Well, well, to get on with the story there was a big crowd making an ell of a row they was and there in the middle was a cove talkin and wavin his arms like flappers so up i goes thinkin he was sellin something to prove that you haven't got a liver and who should it turn out to be but my lodger old guppy what was he doin gasped wilkes between two paroxysms well continued bindle at that particular moment i got up he was talkin about what a fine lot of chaps them uns is and what an awful lot of aunt maudies we was sort of hurt his feelings it did to know he was an englishman when he might a been an un he was just a sayin something about mr llewellyn john when he disappears sudden like and there was a rare old scrap when the police got him out lord he was a sight never thought ten minutes would change a cove so and that ginger all comes about through being a christian and talkin about peace to people what don't want peace we all want peace ginger stuck out his chin aggressively ginger there was reproach in bindle's voice and you a soldier too i'm surprised at you i want this ruddy war to end growled ginger i don't old with war he added as an afterthought now what does it matter to you ging whether you're a carrying a pack or a piano on your back why don't they make peace burst out ginger irrelevantly oh ginger ginger when shall i teach you that the only way to stop a fight is to sit on the other cove's chest and we ain't sittin on germany's chest yet got it but they're willin to make peace growled ginger i don't old with hangin back now you just listen to me why didn't you make peace last week with pincher knobs instead of fightin him he's a ruddy tyke he is snarled ginger well remarked bindle you can call the germans ruddy tykes pleasant way you got a puttin things haven't you ging no old son this ere war ain't a goin to end until you've got the v c that's what we're oldin out for they could make peace if they liked persisted ginger you won't get llewellyn john to give in ging said bindle confidently he's ought stuff he is yes growled ginger savagely all he's got to do is stay at home and read about what us chaps are doin out there 
now ain't you a regular old yellow edded uggins remarked bindle with conviction as he gazed fixedly at ginger whose eyes shifted about restlessly why e's always at work he is don't even have his dinner hour he don't what ginger's incredulity gave expression to his features no dinner hour no for breakfast time neither continued bindle there's always a lot of coves hangin around a wantin to talk about the war and what to do next when he's shavin egg will ring him up him a standin with the lather on makin his chin itch ginger banged down his pewter on the counter and ordered another then sometimes when he's gettin up in the mornin george five will nip round for a jaw and of course kings can go anywhere and you mustn't keep em waitin so up he goes and there's l j a-talkin to himself as he tries to get into his collar and george five a-elpin to find his collar stud when he drops it and it rolls under the chest of drawers ginger continued to gaze at bindle with surprise stamped on his freckled face you got a kid's job to is ging continued bindle warming to his subject if llewellyn john ups around the corner for a drink and to have a look at the papers they're after him in two licks why he's had to give up his hot bath on saturday nights because he was always catching cold through nippin out into the all to answer the telephone im in only a smile and his whiskers ginger spat indecision marking the act works like a blackleg he does and all he gets is black garden no added bindle solemnly don't you never change jobs with him ging it'd kill you it would really i don't old with war grumbled ginger falling back upon his main line of defence look at the price of beer he gazed moodily into the depths of his empty pewter funny cove you are ging said bindle pleasantly ginger spat viciously missing the spittoon by inches there ain't no pleasin you continued bindle digging into the bowl of his pipe with a matchstick you ain't willin to die for your country and you don't seem to want to live for the twins what's the use of twins demanded ginger savagely now if they'd been goats goats queried bindle sell the milk was ginger's laconic explanation they might have been billy goats suggested bindle ginger swore well well remarked bindle as he rose you ain't never going to be appy in this world ging and as to the next who knows now i must be orf to tell mrs b what they been a-doin to er lodger so long and he went out whistling i'd never kissed a soldier till the war two where's mr gupperduck there was anxious alarm in mrs bindle's interrogation well responded bindle as he nodded to mr hearty and waved his hand to mrs hearty i can't rightly say he may be appy with an arp in heaven or he may be a groanin in an ospital with a poultice where his face ought to be where's millikins he demanded looking round she's with her aunt rose wheezed mrs hearty what has happened to joseph faltered mr hearty well it ain't altogether easy to say responded bindle with aggravating deliberation it ought to have been a peace meetin accordin to plan but somehow or other things sort of got mixed up i ain't seen a scrap like it since that little bust up in the country when the lemonade went wrong bindle paused and proceeded to refill his pipe determined to keep mr hearty and mrs bindle on tenterhooks where is he now demanded mrs bindle can't say bindle sucked at his pipe holding a lighted match well down over the bowl i see him being taken orf on a stretcher and what he was wearin wouldn't have made a bathing suit for an ottentot did they kill him joe wheezed mrs hearty you can't kill coves like guppy martha was bindle's response he's got more lives than a rate collector what happened to joseph said mr hearty i had meant to go to that meeting myself mr hearty made the statement as if providence had interposed with the deliberate object of saving his life lucky for you hearty that you didn't remarked bindle significantly you ain't no good at scrappin well i'll tell you what happened guppy seems to have said a little too much about the uns and what fine fellers they was and it sort of given them people what was listening the pip so they goes for guppy the cowards mrs bindle snapped out the words venomously you got to remember lizzie said bindle with unwonted seriousness that lot of those people had lost them what they was fond of through this ere war and they wasn't keen to ear that the un was a sort of picture postcard with a dove a sittin on his helmet what did you do demanded mrs bindle aggressively 
well i just looked on said bindle calmly i've warned guppy more'n once that he'd lose his tail feathers if he wasn't careful but he was that self-willed he was you can't throw unwash over crowds in this ere country without running risks bindle spoke with conviction but it's a free country joseph protested mr hearty rather weakly oh arty arty said bindle wagging his head despondently when will you learn that no one ain't free to say to a cove things what make him wild leastwise without being ready to put his hands up but weren't any of his friends there inquired mrs bindle i see two of em said bindle with a reminiscent grin they caught old cap and whiskers just as he was shinnin up a tree rare cove for trees he seems hauled him down they did then swore he'd never seen old guppy in all his puff cried about it he did peter muttered mrs bindle that his name inquired bindle anyhow it didn't help him for they pulled his whiskers out and dipped him in the pond and when last i see him he was wearin just a big bruise a soft collar and such bits of his trousers as the boys didn't seem to want made me blush it did serve him right cried mrs bindle bindle looked at her curiously thought you was sort of pals with him he remarked he was a traitor a peter betraying his master bindle looked puzzled mr hearty nodded his head in approval was mr wayskin there asked mrs bindle the little chap with the glasses and a beard too big for him what goes about with old cap and whiskers mrs bindle nodded well he got arf trousers and all said bindle with a grin nippy little cove he was he added oh the brutes exclaimed mrs bindle the cowards well remarked bindle it all come about through im trying to give them treacle when they wanted curry perhaps he's gone home mrs bindle half rose as the thought struck her who oh, guppy interrogated bindle yes mr gupperduck said mrs bindle eagerly guppy ain't never coming back to my place bindle announced with decision where's he to sleep then demanded mrs bindle well remarked bindle judicially by what i last see of him he ain't going to sleep much anywhere for some time and he again launched into a harrowing description of mr gupperduck's plight when the police rescued him from the crowd i'll nurse him announced mrs bindle with the air of a martha you won't do no such thing mrs b even mrs hardy looked at bindle arrested by the unwonted determination in his voice you just remember this mrs b continued bindle if ever i catches mr josiah gupperduck or any other cove what loves germans as if they was ims or beer round my place things'll happen what they done to him in the eath won't be nothing to what i'll do to him in fenton street you're a brute bindle was mrs bindle's comment that may be but you just get his duds packed up including wheezy willie and give em to him when he calls i ain't going to have no german spies round my backyard i ain't got no money to put in tanks bindle added but i still got a fist to knock down a cove what talks about peace bindle rose and yawned now i'm orf comin mrs b he inquired no i'm not i want to talk to mr hearty said mrs bindle angrily well so long all and bindle went out leaving mrs bindle and mr hearty to mourn over the fallen hector a minute later the door half opened and bindle thrust his head round the corner don't forget mrs b he said with a grin if i see guppy in fenton street i'll camouflage him i will and with that he was gone i suppose he remarked meditatively as he walked across putney bridge what happened tonight is what guppy had called the peace what passes all understanding end of chapter eleven read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com